righteousness that flows from thy throne. There is a peace within and joy like you've never known. There is a city filled with glory and light. There is a promise of everlasting life in the kingdom of God. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday morning service. As, a record, as we record this video, the sky outside is a brilliant blue and all the birds are singing and it's a really beautiful day. I'm also heartened by the knowledge that uh, I'm now able to get back to my patrol work with Frontier Services, including getting back to the Indigenous communities uh, that I serve up in the Cape, uh, many of whom, uh, well most of whom I haven't seen for a very, very long time since the beginning of the lockdown. Um, indeed, it's one of the, uh, the, the clever tricks of time-shifted video, uh, but as you watch this video, I'm expecting that I will already be away up in the Cape somewhere, catching up with some of those people I haven't seen for a very long time. So let me begin with the words of Psalm 130, verses 1 to 2. Out of the depths I have called to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice, and let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we praise you. We give thanks to you for your tender, loving mercies which endure forever. How can we fully declare your praise? It is you who endows our hearts with your wisdom. It is you who gives us understanding. May we learn to do good seeking justice, remo removing oppression wherever we find it, and supporting those who are in need. Search our hearts, O God, know our hearts, try us, know our anxious thoughts, test us to see if there is any wickedness within us, and lead us in the way everlasting. If anyone loves you, Lord, they will keep your word, and your Father, and our Father will love them, and you will come and make your home with them. So bless you, O God, for all your abundant promises, now and forever. Amen. All right, so our reading uh, this morning is from Matthew chapter 13, uh, from verse 24 down to, uh, down to verse 30. And I'm going to be reading from the NIV edition. So beginning in Matthew 24. This is the parable of the weeds. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But, 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 but while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the, weed also, the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he said, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may roll, root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell, you the, tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. This is the word of the Lord. I'd now like to invite Johnson to come up and uh, give us the message for this morning. Thank you, Johnson. Good morning, church. It's our midweek service. Uh, when is the service? Um, today I've decided to come up with a theme, time to pull up the weeds. Time to pull the weeds. 
In today's lesson, Jesus tells a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed seeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed haze, then the weeds also appeared. So the owner, servants, came to him and said, Sir, don't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? And Enem did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered. Because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, and then gather the wheat and bring them into the barn. I want to give you an illustration of what happened when I was in Zimbabwe at one of our mission sessions. Um, I, I noticed a woman, uh, noticed a few bees buzzing around her home. Since there were only a few, she made no effort to deal with the bees. Over the summer, the bees continued to fly and out in the vent while the woman remained unconcerned. Unaware of the growing seed of bees that was taking up resident just above her ceiling. The wall vent became a hive, and the ceiling of bedroom finally gave in under the weight of hundreds of pounds of honey and thousands of angry bees. While the woman escaped without serious injury, she was unable to repair the damage of her accumulated neglect. So that's a parable about many people's lives. We let things go. We put off dealing with them. We ignore that which is disturbing, yet inconvenient until it is too late. And our ceiling comes in crashing on us. Neglect, what a powerful word. It describes many family relations. Neglect, spouses neglected, children neglected, later older parents neglected, responsibilities neglected, opportunities neglected, it is a sector that hounds off of life. Neglect. Even seen a neighborhood that's neglected. How about a home? How about a garden? So neglect. You can see that there are broken windows around the yard. Litter everywhere. Weeds growing in the garden. Jesus told a parable about a man who sowed good seed in his field. But in the night while he was sleeping, Someone with a grudge against him came and sowed weeds among the wheat. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. We are told that in Syria and Palestine, there is a weed known as the bearded dino, which grows plentiful. Here is the problem with this weed. It bears an uncanny resemblance to the wheat until the head appears on the plant. Only then is the difference easily discerned. So the wheat appears to be wheat. Even an experienced farmer could not tell the difference until the time comes for it to produce fruit. So only then is true nature revealed. So to have attempted to weed it out sooner would have been impossible. And attempting to do so would have destroyed valuable grains. So weeds and wheat, kind of a scary parable. If you think about it, it's easy to talk about God's grace, God's loving, unacceptable, and unworthy. But we are left with these harsher teachings of our master. Some people are like wheat. Some people are like weeds. So what does that mean? <laughs> wheat goes in barn. Weeds go in furnace. I don't know about you, but I want to be wheat. I don't want to end up in the furnace with the weeds. You can do with this parable what you will. You can think whatever you think about with this parable. Fighting the weeds in our own life is what I want to talk about as well. I do know that I'm continually fighting the weeds in my life. Aren't you? If I neglect my car, sooner or later it catches up with me. The battery cables erode and one cold winter night the car refuses to start. And you know what? Being a pastor, what I will do? I will pray. Lord, why did you let this happen to me? I need to get to that meeting, but my car won't start. 
But the Lord has nothing to do with it. It was my own neglect. I've neglected my car. That's why it can't start. If I neglect my loan, soon they are done anyway. If I neglect my, 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 my health, soon or later I pay a price. If I neglect my responsibility here at church, with sprout all over the place, battling with goes with being a responsible human being. So keeping a garden or keeping a life is not easy. It needs someone who has to take care. Someone said that when weeding, the best way to make sure you are removing a weed and not a valuable plant is to pull on it. If it comes out of the ground easily, it is a valuable plant. So how true it is? Pulling weeds is not easy. And it's never funny. It is unvariable, a mark of character as well as successful living. I grew up in rural Zimbabwe, in Mashingo. We didn't have electricity in our house, even today. We had two paraffin lamps with wicks that had to be lit daily. Once they were lit, a glass shed fit over the flame and they glowed. My father kept telling us, children, clean the shed before you put it over the lamp. If you don't, you don't get as much light as what? I didn't like cleaning the lamp sheds. It took a long time and lots of elbow grease to score off the stick and grace too. But when the shed was clean, one lamp would be bright enough to light up the whole living room. I, I discovered that what was struck, what was true back then about lamp cleaning is also true about life cleaning. Neither you nor I ask anybody else to clean up our lives. May my life belongs to me and your life belongs to you. I have to clean up my life daily and my light shone, so do yours. So you need to clean up your life every day. And that is what is very important. We are mixing our metaphors, perhaps, cleaning lampshades, pulling up weeds, cleaning out a beehive growing in our ceiling. But you get the idea. There are things in life which must be looked after. If we let them go, we start to not notice them. And generally, we notice after the damage has already been done. So we need to keep an eye on the weeds that are growing. Fighting the weeds in our relationships. Let me say a word to parents. Beware, kids today are exposed to temptations that earlier generations never dreamed of. Sometimes we let our kids on the TV. Even if we don't even know the channels they are watching. There are a lot of things now which are happening to our kids. They are exposed to pornographic things. They are exposed to all sorts of things. Violent movies. But because we don't, we don't think, we don't think that we are damaging our own kids by letting them move on from anywhere they want on the TVs. We think it's okay because they are calm, they are not talking to you, they are not disturbing what you are doing. But we know that we are damaging our own kids. Most kids are great kids now. But some of them will be damaged goods by the time they reach adulthood. Because they know things which are even beyond your knowledge. Some of that damage could be avoided by vigilant parenting. What it means, it needs as a parent to guide the children. What they watch, what they see, who they play with, and all those things. It's very important. In, in, in his book, 1996, Beyond the Classroom, Lawrence Sternberg, and the professor of psychology cited this survey of 20,000 teenagers in which one said claimed their parents had no idea who their friends were, where they went after school, and how they spent their money. Some kids, they just see after school, maybe they leave school at 3 p.m. They only come home 7 p.m. The parents don't even ask where they have been, who they were playing with, what, how, how they have used their money they have. Even when they ask for money, pocket money, the parents don't even ask you to say, what are you going to use it for? Some of these kids, they buy drugs. They buy intoxicating things. But I'm saying to you, we need to be vigilant as parents. We need to start pulling up the weeds. There are some weeds growing in those gardens. Weeds that need to be pulled. But we need to understand that neglect is a form of abuse. Take time to pull the weeds. It's so important in the area of relationship with your kids. Fighting the weeds in our relationship with God. Some of us have weeds growing in our most important relationship of all. Our relationship with God. It is true. 
We don't pray as often as we should. We're forgotten. We don't rely on God's guidance like we should. We live as practical atheists most of the time. We no longer think to uh, God's claim on our lives. The wheels grow. We think we can do everything on our own. We no longer ask God for our guidance. It's because we think, yes, we can do it on our own. And the wheels are starting to grow. There are no wheels growing our lives in our relationship with our parents, with our spouses, with God, and with God. What about you? It's a simple idea, but so vital. Relationships take maintenance, just like our car. Just like our house, just like our lawn, just like our community. We need to uh, see that our relationship has been weeded enough so that it's not toxic. Because if we leave it, it becomes very toxic. Our relationship with our children, our spouses, our parents, and most important of all, our relationship with God. And this thing, we need to pull them. Are they with growing in your garden that you have seen recent? It's time to pull them out. It's time to remove those weeds. When? Today. It's time to pull them out. Sometimes people don't observe those weeds. But I've seen people walking around in their yards with grass right in their knees. They are not worried about it. With litter everywhere. They are not worried about it. But I'm calling for you to say, to give attention to the weeds that are growing in your garden, in everywhere. May the good Lord help you to understand that weeds are very important. They need now to be pulled out. Because if you don't, it will be difficult. Especially for our young kids. May the good Lord help you. And the good Lord bless you. The good Lord guide you. The good Lord protect you to take care of the weeds. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, that have promised that the testing of our faith produces perseverance and steadfastness, which in time bring forth the beautiful Christ-like character that you desire in all your children, but which all too often I personally seek to avoid or regard as a time of bitter struggle. Help us, Lord, to embrace our trials that we see fit to enter into life. Help us, Lord, to pull up the weeds that are growing in our gardens, the weeds in our own family, the weeds in our own children, Let us not neglect the pastoral oversight of our family, especially on our own children. Father, be with us this morning as we continue to worship you, praise you, and honor you. Guide us, Lord. Let us receive the grace of God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us from now and evermore. Amen. The kingdom of God oh. That flows from my throne. There is a peace within and a joy like you've never known. There is a city filled with glory.
In the key. 